morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Francis. And um, we um, are going to greet our celebrant, uh, Bishop George. And if you could please stand, our opening song is Sing to the Mountains in the Glory and Praise Hymnal. It's number 673. We pray. 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred, according to the flesh. They are children of Israel, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Christ, who is over all. God be blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. scholars, the gospel writer was writing to the, early, to the early followers of Christ who were Jewish. In this miracle, we see the genius of Matthew by employing popular Jewish concepts in the gospel. The waters in Jewish tradition were not always considered as calming or life-giving. It was also a symbol of chaos and destruction. In the book of Genesis, the story of creation, we read in the beginning, now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The rest of the creation story tells how God brings order to chaos into, into the universe. In this same book, we read of the story of Noah in the waters of the great flood and how God used water to cleanse the earth. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 69, the psalmist writes, Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. In Psalm 29, we read, The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord thunders <clears throat> over the mighty waters. In the Jewish tradition, it was God who conquers over chaos. In the Gospel, we hear that Jesus has the same power to calm the seas and walk over it. This same text, when read by the early Jewish Christians, must have clearly made these connections and must have understood that this miracle story in the Gospel alludes to the divinity of Jesus. We hear in the Gospel how the disciples were terrified and crying with fear when they saw Jesus walking over the water. But Jesus speaks to them, Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Jesus uses the words, It is I. We hear this similar reply in the Old Testament when God reveals his name to Moses. The development of the, the theology of Jesus' divinity was understood that this, in this miracle story and certainly at work during the early days of Christianity. Knowing that our Lord Jesus has conquered chaos, what are we afraid of? For like Peter, we must have walked over water when we put, when we put our faith in Jesus. When we take our eyes off Him, then we are overwhelmed by our daily troubles. For me, it was a difficult decision I had to make when I had to leave friends and family behind 14 years ago. I had to uproot myself in a country that was my homeland for the hopes of a better future. I felt I had no immediate support system <coughs> except the telephone. I still remember. My first New Year's Eve in America was spent in Naniwet Inn by myself, eating a large pie of pizza <laughs> in the midst of a snowstorm. The first few months felt lonely. However, deep inside, 
I knew I was, I was doing the right thing. Without faith, I, I would have surely been overcome by loneliness. It was faith in God which made me follow through on where God leads me. And that journey led me here, speaking in front of you. It is but natural to fear. Yet, it takes a person of faith to conquer it. Sometimes, when we dwell on our troubles, it becomes too much that it feels phys physically difficult to breathe. We feel like we are being drowned by our own worries. Yet, Jesus will take us by the hand and get us back on our feet only if we let him. The choice is up to us to drown in our own worries or to walk with Jesus. Let us also be mindful about our dear brothers and sisters in war-torn countries, especially in Syria, Iraq, Israel, and Palestine. We cannot ignore the headlines of the news. And when we think about the persecution and the thought of facing death on a daily basis, it must be a cause of great fear and torment. Let us offer them our prayers for God to increase their faith and for the senseless violence to end. Lord Jesus, increase our faith. Let us stand and profess our faith in this God who comes to save us as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father, through God all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers and petitions to this God who always seeks to answer us for the Jewish people, that they would remain faithful to the covenant God made with them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those stranded on Mount Sinar because of their religious beliefs, that efforts to aid them and help them safely <coughs> leave be successful, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Christians of Mosul, exiled from their homes by Muslim extremists, that they would become the good seed of faith wherever they are scattered. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the more than 57,000 children who are refugees in our country, that as we struggle to act with justice, that the Lord help the righteous to be kind and care for them in their most basic needs. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the efforts of peacemakers and diplomats, that the Lord guide them to find ways to end the violence in Iraq and Syria, Israel and Gaza, Ukraine and Russia, and other war-torn countries, and bring peace and reconciliation to people. 
we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In the parishes of the American National Catholic Church, that the gracious and merciful Lord steadfast love and compassion be reflected in the lives of both pastors and members. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, for those with cancer, for those who pray with sighs too deep for words, that the Lord heal them and comfort them. And are there any that we should especially remember this morning? Isabella. Angela Gilberti. Frank McCarthy. Poor young woman Katie who's just been diagnosed with a cancer. Yeah. for the American National Catholic Church as it gathers in convocation this week, that we might hear where God is leading us and have the courage to follow. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pray for the new parishes in formation in the American National Catholic Church, Resurrection in St. Louis, St. Brendan's in Tom's River, and a new community beginning in Pine, uh, Pine Branch, uh, New Jersey. Also, please pray, uh, uh, during my time in St. Louis, I'll be speaking to the parish members of St. Stanislaus in uh, St. Louis uh, about uh, their wanting to affiliate with us as well, so that God might bless us. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we ask you to hear our, our prayers and petitions and answer them if they be for our good. We make them in the name of Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord, accept from your church these gifts which in your mercy you have given us to offer and which by your power you transform into the sacrament of our salvation. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. When sin had scattered your children afar, you chose to gather them back to yourself through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit. Thus, a people made one by the oneness of the Trinity shines forth as your church, the body of Christ, the temple of the Spirit, to the praise of your manifold wisdom. And so we join the multitude of angels in their joyful chorus of praise. disobeyed you and turned away from your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death, but extended your hand in mercy that all who search for you might find you. Again and again you offered the human race a covenant and through the prophets nurtured the hope of salvation. Father, you so loved the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Made flesh by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one like us in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to those in sorrow joy. In order to fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, but by rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for each other and for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first gift to those who believe, to complete his work on earth and renew the world in perfect holiness. Lord, we pray that the same Holy Spirit may sanctify these gifts. Let them become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ as we celebrate the great mystery which he left us as an everlasting covenant. When the hour for him had come to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved those, having loved his own in the world, he loved them to the end. While they were at supper, he took bread and said the blessing, he broke the bread, he, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, he took the cup filled with wine. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. And handing the cup to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ 
and his ascension to your right hand and looking forward to his coming in glory we offer you it we offer you the sacrifice of his body and blood an offering acceptable to you which brings salvation to the whole world lord look upon the sacrifice which you yourself have prepared for your church and by your holy spirit gather all who share this one bread and one cup into the one body a living sacrifice in christ to the praise and glory of your name Lord, remember those for whom we make this offering, your servants, the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome, I, your unworthy servant, and all bishops, the priests, deacons, and other ministers of your church, those who take part in this offering, those here present, and all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. and all the dead whose faith is known only to you. Merciful Father, grant that we, your children, may enjoy the inheritance of heaven with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and all your saints, there together with all creation, set, set free from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bless the world with all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
my sisters and brothers, this is Jesus, our Lamb of God. This is Jesus who invites each and every one of us into the experience of God's love. And how happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Here at St. Francis, each and every one of you are invited into full participation to the sacrament of the altar. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. the blood of Christ can be salt over us.
let us pray. Merciful God, let our sharing in this sacrament deliver us from evil and make us stand firm in the light of your truth. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our brother did a terrific job, didn't he, with his life? <laughs> Both of you who have been here at St. Francis, I think with me, you can hear how Brother Gigi has developed into somewhat of a theologian and certainly a, certainly a, a preacher who captures our attention, I think, by his quiet, prayerful style. So, so I'm so happy. I'm so happy that, uh, that when Gigi uh, uh, talked about his experience and God leading him here, uh, much like all of you, it takes great courage. Uh, to uh, be part of uh, what it is that we're doing here as God's people. And so uh, and so here he is, right? It should also tell you, be careful. Um, if you say anything to me, I usually am like a dog with a bone with that kind of stuff. And so Brother G simply mentioned he thought he'd like to be a priest. And here he is, right? So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so uh, with God's grace, Brother G will be ordained to the, uh, to the priesthood here on December 13th. So please join us in uh, that wonderful celebration, right? That wonderful celebration. Um, the thrift store, we're still doing it. We just have made a proposal for you. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, a proposal for a, we've just made a proposal for a new location. So that should be happening. Hopefully we'll get word back from that. But please know that it's not, we're still, it's, uh, I guess, kind of St. Francis's process, but uh, but we are, we are. it's a better location. So hopefully we sent them a proposal uh, Friday, so hopefully we'll hear by Monday. So that'll be great. So, uh, and yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, the, the, uh, the music? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Jerry's telling me to thank Pam, but I was going to do that anyway, because she's so wonderful. And, uh, what a nice job. You know? I know she gets nervous, but I think she does a great job. Right? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. We get, a, we get a, a record deal out of this. Like, right? so, uh, I think probably Peter Maureen here made her a little nervous as well. Peter Maureen played during our Sunday, Saturday Mass, right? So, so uh, it's nothing like, uh, it's nothing like uh, having other professionals in the room with you, right? So, uh, so, but nice job. Very nice job. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Really well, well done. Anybody here for the first time? Want to tell us who you are? Uh, I'm Paul Kane uh, from Rutherford. I'm Pauline. Ella from Paul, Rutherford. Paul and Pauline. Yeah. <laughs> tell us your name. I'm, I'm Sean Dennis Alma Kane from Rutherford. <laughs> Hi, Sean. Well, welcome. That was a powerful lecture. So, uh, yes. Uh, I'm Nicholas Bruno from Rutherford. I'm Nicholas and we're from Elizabeth. And Monica Campbell. Welcome, 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 welcome. That's, that's it, that's unusual, right? So, anybody's birthday? Yeah? Oh, that's unusual. Um, we're having an uh, acolyte meeting after Mass, so and Brother T, and a lecturer's meeting after Mass. So, um, I'm going to encourage you to participate in whatever you can here at St. Francis. It's really important. Um, we had a, uh, uh, an experience in St. Louis that spoke to me about the value of uh, our understanding of one of the founding principles that grows out of Vatican Council II is something known as subsidiarity. And that is, is that everything needs to be dealt with at the lowest possible level. And in St. Louis, the parishioners there really gathered and they really prayed and they discerned a different calling. And so they've established a new parish in St. Louis. This church really belongs to you. Vatican Council II gave it back to you. I was watching Lou and Kate come up to do the readings and I thought, um, from ancient of days, uh, members of the assembly have stood up and come forward to proclaim the word of God. From the beginnings of the liturgy, people have gathered and served at this table. And so, uh, uh, so please, please come and be part of this with us. This is a tremendous journey. Don't miss a moment of this. Don't miss a moment of this. Come and be part of this in any way that you can. Um, uh, and, and hopefully, with great joy, you and I make this journey uh, towards our salvation. So, so come, and there, come and be there. I'm leaving on Tuesday to have some meetings with uh, some people in St. Louis. So keep me in your prayers. And then next weekend, I'll be uh, preaching at all of the Masses at St. Stanislaus, which was a Roman Catholic parish that uh, 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 had a successful legal battle against Rome and maintained their own parish. 
and so they've been uh, free of any jurisdiction, so they've asked me if I would come and speak with them about affiliating with the American National Catholic Church, much like our parish in, uh, in Long Ranch, Our Lady Guadalupe. And so, uh, so, so keep us in your prayers, right? And uh, the clergy and all of the people of God who can come will be gathering in St. Louis for our convocation. So, so, uh, so it'll be a time of hopefully great renewal for the church. Right? So, so uh, other announcements? Uh, on August 23rd is Macy's Shop for a Cause, and we are um, asking for a donation of five dollars. That entitles you to a $25 coupon. 25%, sorry. 25% off coupon uh, for Macy's Valley only on August 23rd. So if you plan to shop uh, on, on August 23rd, please think of Macy's and get the coupons in the back. You can see me after Mass. And uh, well, you, get, you get, the, the parish gets 5%. So you get 25% off and we get 5%. I love this. You never pay full price on this. I feel like I, feel like I work for Macy's. I feel like I work for Macy's. But, but, uh, but I think it's a great deal. Anyway, so. so shop if you can. Uh, we have some, our uh, oldest is going back, uh, is going to college for the first time, so we have a lot of shopping to do. Right? So, so if you have any of that. The parish is also uh, collecting um, uh, new school materials for students who may need those. So if you would please bring those and contribute those. Backpacks, pencils, you know, things like that. Uh, those things that students may need. So if you would do that, right? So, good. So the Lord be with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.